Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be using Blender to create a simple scene for our engine. Uh, now this is not gonna be a Blender advanced mechanics tutorial. I'm not teaching you how to use all the different layers of Blender. I'm gonna be teaching you the basics because when it comes down to it, I am tired of going on the internet and looking for different models and meshes that exist, but they don't meet what I'm actually trying to do. Say I'm trying to do mirror reflections, but I can't find anything that has good mirror reflections in this material. I'm gonna show you how to go into Blender and create it within like five minutes. So if you like this episode, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. I won't mind. If you want to subscribe, do so because it helps me more than you think it does. And yeah, let's jump into it. So the goal of this tutorial is to get you into something that looks like this in Blender, where we have four different monkey heads or Suzanne. This is Suzanne. Suzanne's like the mascot of Blender. So the reason we're using Suzanne heads is because as you can see there, it's very detailed on the curves. If we just did a cube, we wouldn't be able to see those nice smooth curves. So that's why we're using Suzanne heads. First thing we're gonna do uh, before is just download it. We need to go download it. So if you don't have Blender already, they're currently in version 2.82. Uh, the older version, 2.79, whatever it was before 2.8, was really different. Uh, so they did a huge, massive overhaul on the user interface. The Blender Guru, obviously, he's doing pretty well for himself. He has 1.12 million. We're almost there. Uh, someday we'll be there. Uh, but he'll teach you how to do all sorts of cool stuff with Blender uh, 2.8. So, yeah, go check him out. Once you download it, we should have Blender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up that blender that got installed and we're gonna go check it out. So first thing it does is it opens up this screen. Uh, then another thing that it will do is it will show ask you like, what do you wanna click with? And you'll wanna click left. So do the left mouse button. If for some reason you're like me and you went over that step, go ahead and go to edit preferences. And then down here, um, if you go to the key map, it'll say select with left. Cause if you don't select with left, it'll be really weird. And um, this is just my suggestion. This is what I do. So exit out of that. So here's our scene. Uh, first thing I'll do start off with is I'm going to show you some key inputs, uh, how to how to like move around because I think that's somewhat important. And there's not that many keys to move around. So uh, the first one that I'm doing right now is I'm just holding the middle mouse button and I'm going around. Now, uh, if I want to zoom in and out, I can just scroll on the mouse wheel pretty pretty sweet and if I want to pan I just hold shift and the middle mouse wheel to drag around so if I want to like go around somewhere you know you can get anywhere in the scene now if you want to zoom in on the current thing you're working on just press the period button and it'll push you right there so pretty straightforward stuff so what I'm gonna do the first thing I'm gonna do in this scene is I'm gonna delete all of these nodes so if you just drag and do that hit the delete button the little delete button this this little delete button right there, that's the one. Uh, and that should delete everything from the scene, uh, including this cube. All right, so we have a blank canvas. Now let's go add some Suzannes to the scene. So I'm gonna go add right here in the top left, mesh, monkey, ooh, ooh. monkey. All right, so now we have one Suzanne. Now we also want to move her around. We don't just want her in the center. You could just export her like this and everything be all gravy. Um, because that's all you want to do. You just want to work with one mesh. But in our case, we want multiple sub meshes on top of a larger mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click this move button right here. And that'll bring up these arrows. And then I'll use this red one and I'll just drag her over. And then I'm going to create three other monkeys. And dra- <coughs> And dra- <coughs> And drag them off to the right and the top and the bottom. So let's do that mesh monkey up, mesh monkey down. Oh, look at Suzanne, she looks so beautiful. All right, cool. So now we have our four monkeys in space that we can add different materials to. Uh, but before we add materials, what I wanna do is I want to, look how blocky they look. They look so blocky. We're gonna get rid of that. So for each individual one, what we need to do is we need to click on them. So make sure you're in object mode. You can uh, go back and forth with tab, but you know, it just looks like this. this is what object mode looks like Go ahead and go over to this little wrench on the side and Add a modifier uh, the modifier we're gonna add is subdivision surface and that's just basically gonna give her more Vertices on her face. So go ahead and do that make sure a little bit more smooth 
and then we need to click apply because you need to apply that subdivision surface and the last thing we need to do to make her look all shiny is just right click on her now and do shade smooth and now look how beautiful she looks look at her she's gorgeous um and i'm gonna do that for every other one so yeah i'll fast forward that one second And as you can see, we have four beautiful monkeys, left, right, top, bottom, um, all aligned. And they're all shaded really differently. If you wanted to, you could have just left them really blocky. If you're going for the low poly look for your engine, just export them like that. You're done. Fine. Export it. Done. Uh, but I want to add different materials on each one of these. So what I'll do is I'll select the top one here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to shading first. Shading's a good place. That's basically where your shader stuff happens, right? Shading. You're shading it. We know all about shading. I'm going to hold shift, use the middle mouse button, and drag it down a little bit. And there we go. We have our monkeys. So now that we have our monkeys, let's go and add some materials. So if you go down here uh, on the right side, let's, let's select our monkey. Go down on the right side. This is our materials. If you wait a second, I'll see the material properties. Uh, go to new, and let's add a new material for this monkey. Now this monkey has a new material. Uh, I'm not going to do any of this node stuff. Like I said, this is not advanced tutorial. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this stuff over here. And let's just start by changing the base color. And if you see if I drag it around, a new color appears. Let's make it a really shiny monkey. I want to make it like a purple shiny monkey. So uh, it'll be purple. Uh, I'm going to go down a little bit. Uh, you can play with all these values. It's fine. No one's going to punch you or beat you up. I might. Just kidding. Um, and let's... Take down the roughness all the way. See how it became more shiny? And let's increase that metallicness. Oh. So now that we have that, we can do whatever we want. Uh, let's make this like, that's fine. Cool. So there's our shiny monkey. I'm going to click on the next one, add a new material. This material is going to be, let's do maybe that orange right there. Let's do roughness down just a little bit this time uh, and increase the specularity. So it's just a shiny monkey and not add any metallic. We don't need any metallic. Um, so that looks good. That's a good orange monkey. Let's add another material for this white one. So click that. Let's go base color. Let's do, um, I don't know, pink. Pink, pink monkey's cool. Uh, let's add a little less specular, a little more roughness. So it's a rough monkey. And then we'll click this last one over here, and I'm going to do a base color. Well, I'm going to keep it as white, but I'll make the metallic all the way up, and then the roughness all the way down, so it's a perfect mirror. And boom, we have four different types of monkeys, all of which have different materials applied to them. Um, however, we need to organize our files just a little bit more, because right now we've just kind of added meshes, and if you look over here in the scene collection, it's just Suzanne 1, 2, 3. If you look at our material, it's material 4. We can't really read that when we're trying to do debugging, so we need to go through and rename these different things to make them more understandable. So if I click on this one, you'll see uh, the top monkey, you'll see this is Suzanne 2. So what I can do is I can just double click that and say this will be Susie, actually I'll do Suzanne, Suzanne top. So that's the top monkey. Click this one, this is the bottom, so Suzanne bottom, I'll just do bot. Uh, this one is going to be the right, so Suzanne right. And this is obviously Suzanne left. Suzanne left. And so now we've kind of reorganized these into a better, uh, we, we can understand it a little bit more. So if I go to the collection up here and I click new, uh, oops, delete that one. Go to the scene collection and do new, we're going to create another collection. Um, and so this collection on top, I'm going to do top bottom collection and this collection right here is going to be left right collection and I'm going to put the left and the right monkey in this collection right here and just you know like I said we're trying to do different things in our engine we want to organize this differently we don't want it all under the same scene, we want multiple meshes with multiple sub meshes. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each monkey and we're just gonna go find that material and right here, just rename the material. So this will be purple material. I'm gonna click on the orange monkey and I'm gonna say orange material. I'm gonna click on the pink monkey and I'm gonna go pink material. And this is the metal monkey, so I'm going to go like mirror 
monkey make mirror material boom and yeah there you have it uh we've set up a really cool scene we've added some materials we've renamed things so that it's a little easier to understand now let's go into exporting so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to file and i'm going to export okay and here's our wonderful obj file the wavefront obj file that we've been using so i'm going to click that uh, I'm going to just go into, let's say, my desktop right here. And I'm going to rename this file, this OBJ file. Let's name it uh, The Suzanne's. Because that's what I've been naming it while practicing for this. So The Suzanne works just fine. Uh, and if I go over here to the right side, you'll see that we have all these different options. Uh, we want the material groups to be included, of course. And that should be good. Uh, the next thing that we might want to change is one of these values. So smooth groups, right normals, include UVs. This will give us our normals and UVs. Yes. And we also want our materials. Yes. So those three need to be checked. Apply the modifiers that we had over here. Uh, that's just going to apply them before. If we didn't click apply, this will apply them for us. And that is all good. So I'm just going to save them straight to my desktop. I'll export that OBJ. And let's go verify that our objects ex exist so there's our obj file uh it doesn't really pull in that material file for some reason not sure why and here's the mtl file so if we were to open these with something like i don't know visual studio code we can open them here and we can see that we have here's our material file with our different materials so we have purple material pink material orange material mirror material and here's the Suzanne's with all of our vertices applied. So there's our normals, our texture coordinates, and our vertices. And then as we go down, we have all of the indices. And it creates all these different meshes with all these different things. So cool, right? Uh, in the future, don't worry. We will go over exactly what all of this stuff means because that's important as well. But I did want to show you how to export it. So now that we've created it, uh, using Blender, let's go ahead and import it into our engine. And here we are in our engine. Uh, so what I can do now is I can go ahead and import that OBJ file. So I'm gonna go to Entities, Libraries, Mesh Library, and we can go up to the top and add one more of these little values. So I'm just gonna add right here, uh, this will be, what is it, the Suzanne's.obj, but we don't need that. And then I'm gonna name this the Suzanne's case the Suzanne's boom okay so in the code we've added it but we haven't actually put it over here so go to core in res uh, whatever that new group is delete it and go to your finder go find those files that you had and just drag them over into your engine make sure all these are checked in the way they are right now and press that so I'm gonna create a new group right here I'm gonna call it the the Suzanne's I'm just gonna actually call it Suzanne's and yes now we have our Suzanne's on our engine and we can use them so go to game shiz let's go to game objects create a new file a Swift file so the file will be called the Suzanne's uh, what I like to do is just go to quad because <laughs> it's very simple and paste all this stuff in there Let's replace all the quads and that with uh, the Suzanne's. The Suzanne's. This will be the Suzanne. <laughs> and yeah, we have a game object that is a Suzanne game object. We can use it in our scene now. So if I go back to our scenes, sandbox scene. Now I'll rename this. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll do it right now. So refactor, rename. We're going to call quad the Suzanne's. And the quad will now be the Suzanne's. <laughs> it's a the Suzanne's object. <laughs> uh, and let's not do any of this stuff right here, including the party parrot. Let's just kind of remove that and press play. If we were to press play right now, it's black. I'm going to fix one thing real quick. Let's go up to, uh, let's go to types, metal types. And down here towards the bottom, what I want to do is for material, let's just use material color. 
shouldn't have to state the material color and the material color we're gonna we're gonna reduce it just a little bit let's put it to four because right now it's almost white and it's too bright so there's our material color let's go back to our scene sandbox scene um we can just delete this actually press play and let's see what sort of output we get okay so it's loaded and look at our beautiful scene oh my goodness doesn't that look good there's our four suzannes obviously they don't have the material applied to them because we don't have any way of doing so and i will be doing an episode on how to apply material each sub meshes material to itself but as of right now, we don't need that. All we need to know is that we have four Suzannes imported into our engine that we can modify. So I'm just gonna update this debug camera to go to like, I don't know, seven. All right, let's do 10. Something just a little bit farther back because microphone's in the way. Um, because yeah, we just wanna pull it back. Uh, we can say Suzannes, the Suzannes dot set specular let's do shininess material shininess to like let's say 100 it's going to apply it to the whole mesh like i said i'm going to show you exactly how to make it so that you know they're not all having to get the exact same value applied to them so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh, i know it wasn't really a blender tutorial it was a blender tutorial but very basic but it has to do with our engine so i'm going to put this into our engine playlist remember subscribe because really i'm you know, you need the support of your subscribers. You guys are my subscribers. I want to keep pushing out content for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See you next time.